let's take a look at processing a few images. We'll start at the bottom here and work our way up. Now this one I like. We've got a really clear area of focus and then it falls off as it goes a little further back. But the bright vivid colors are a bit distracting. Let's start by a basic auto exposure and then recover our highlights a little bit. And I think that exposure is a bit bright so I'm going to back that down. But a slight lift here to the front flowers works well. I'll enhance with a little bit of clarity and you see that that does a nice job on the leaves of really bringing in some separation on the shadowy textures. While I like that and I'm happy where it's going, I feel like there's a few areas of distraction, notably down here below the leaf. This is one of those things that if I could have composed differently, moving slightly to the right, it might have been better off than this flower further away coming in. But we'll take the paintbrush tool here and use the adjustment brush with a mask so we could see it and choose auto mask. Now I could paint over that area and see what I've got. If red's hard to see, just switch to a color like blue. And you'll note that you could tell what's masked. Now I'll just zoom in, command plus will work. Hold down the space bar and navigate over and that pulls me in a bit closer. Now we'll paint over till we feel like that section is properly selected. Remember, you can feather that a little bit for a gradual transition. And if you get an area you don't want, just hold down the Option key and it will subtract. And you can actually remove parts of the mask if needed. Now, that feels pretty good there. I feel like we've got that background area. So let's turn the mask off. And what we'll do is, for that mask, just pull down the exposure a little bit and the saturation in that background area. That helps but it has a hard edge there. So definitely crank up the feathering and play a little bit with the size. Let's just refine that a little and bleed it over. All right, that helped. And the rest of the way we'll get there from some cropping, but we toned that area down a bit. Remember, with the pin selected, you know you're working on it and this will make it simple to adjust. So if you feel like it's too much detail, pull down the clarity and that will help soften that area a bit. Too bright, darken it up a little bit so it just becomes something in the background. All right, that feels pretty good. Let's go back and deselect and we'll go just to the normal adjustment. So I'll choose the hand tool and we'll just finish this out. Pop the vibrance a little and grab the crop tool and let's go with a three to four aspect ratio. Set the initial crop and I like that. Remember, if you want to rotate that, just turn it and it will go the other direction. And maybe we only want these two flowers, ignoring that one back there. That actually feels a bit better to me. So we'll go in there. Let's just tighten it up a little. And press the return key to apply the crop. I like where that's going. Let's try another. For this image here, we've got some great detail forming in all of these tips. Remember, you can zoom in to really check things. And don't obsess on perfect sharpness, but focus on the overall detail. I like some of these highlights that are appearing. Let's start by bringing up the clarity a little bit and refine the highlight recovery. Well, I think actually a little brighter works well here. I'm going to lift those so that they pop a bit more and bring out the vibrance. While I like that, let's experiment with a few different white balances. I'm going to try cloudy, maybe a little bit greenish for me, daylight, or an auto. And in this case, auto actually worked pretty well. Let's jump right over to the details tab and bring up that sharpening a bit more. Remember, this is really going to bring out some of those edges and details. But as you do that, it's important to use the masking slider. If you option or alt drag on it, you can see what's being selected and that did a much nicer job. Now I really feel like those details are coming out. We've got great details and glistening, but the rest of the image isn't affected. All right, I like that. Let's just grab our crop tool and we'll make a five by seven, place the image and use the guides to get it centered in the frame. I want to avoid this little distracting area here of the curve of the leaf. That feels pretty good. Press enter to apply. Jump over to effects and just darken down the edges just slightly. 
That feels pretty good, but I think a little bit of a darkening on the bottom would be useful. So let's pull in that gradual vignette. And I like the darkening of the exposure, but we'll leave the saturation up. Now we have a slight ramping that pulls you into that image a bit more. And I feel good about that image. Let's keep working. For this image here, I like the controlled depth of field, how the background's falling off. But there are areas back there that are just too bright. Remember, the mask tool works great. And by adjusting the controls on this, you can set the feather and use the auto mask option. This makes it really quick to choose what we want. Remember, turn the mask on and you can actually see what you've selected. By painting over those leaves, it's easy to create a very targeted adjustment. Now, because auto mask is turned on, you may occasionally notice some spots. You can always temporarily deselect that and fill in the large middle areas, reserving auto mask for the outside edge. So if you feel like you've missed a few spots, you could turn that into the selection that you need. Let's go back to auto mask and just fill out this top edge. That works. And remember, if you get something you don't want, just hold down the option key and it will erase, making it easy to remove any stray selections. Left bracket smaller brush to get into a smaller spot. And I feel like we've got the leaves pretty well selected. So let's turn off the mask and now we can work with it. Now that that's selected, let's just refine the overall exposure. That feels pretty good. And we're gonna really bring up the clarity there and notice how that just brings out great details in the leaf. All right, I like that. Let's make one more new adjustment and we're gonna paint on the background here. Remember, using the auto mask option and viewing the mask makes this a lot easier. In this case, we're just being very targeted and dialing in just what we need. Now, if auto mask is too much, you could turn it off, but I find that using it around edge details is useful. Left bracket smaller brush to get into a smaller gap there. And we got that edge pretty well. Let's fill in here just a little bit. That's working. And I'm just making a selection. We got all along the curve of the leaf there. We could turn off the auto mask option, get a bigger brush, and just fill that in. Now that we've got a good selection on the area outside of the leaf, I'll make sure it's selected and turn off the visibility of the mask. The reason why I selected back there is I actually want to darken that a bit more. Now remember, as you darken, saturation increases. So it's a good idea to pull that down a little bit if it's popping too much. You also may decide to reduce clarity so it's not so crisp in the background. That falls out pretty nice. I like where that is, so we'll just finish it out. Grab the gradient tool here for the graduated filter. Put a little gradient on that leaf pulling into it. That looks pretty good there. Just wanted to darken down that corner. Switch over to the hand tool and jump to effects, and we'll apply an overall vignette across the board. Remember, clicking the Y button here lets you see the side-by-side -side comparison. And I think the selective darkening and adjustments we did to clarity there really drove the focus correctly to the plant. It's kind of nice to see some of the abstract shapes and curves here, and I'm happy with that image.